Hey, what is up, YouTubes? Let's run through the reasons why you would or would not want to buy some Time Spiral Remastered. This set is another new product from Wizards where they have remastered the draft experience from the Time Spiral block, which includes cards from Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, and Future Sight. In total, Time Spiral Remastered has 289 cards from those three sets, making up this remastered set. The wild card, as it were though, when it comes to the value and the reason we're cracking these packs is that each pack you open has a time shifted card in it. These are from a separate list of 121 cards from throughout Magic's history. The other unique thing about these time shifted cards is that they have the old OG card border. Some cards are awesome and valuable like Thoughtseize, some not so much, and yes, these cards can be foil. About one in every 27 or so Time Spiral Remastered packs has a foil, time-shifted, older, bordered card. So there's the set breakdown for you. The first scenario, you may be wondering if you should buy this set to play with it, and I'm just gonna say yes. If you have a group that wants to draft it, for me, then it's not even a question. I'm buying a box and I'm happy to split it or draft it with a pod or group of friends for give or take 25, 30 bucks a person. That's a good night of MTG fun and the whole flashback remastering of a set that I used to play with or haven't got to experience to me, well worth it, happy to do so and spend the money on that. But what about from a strictly financial decision? Should you buy a box to split with a friend or to hold on to, to potentially flip in the future or to crack and sell the singles? To answer these questions, let's jump into MTG Goldfish and use an article from another Seth and dive into the ever-changing expected value or EV of this set. And that other Seth is AKA Saffron Olive, of course, and here he dove through this, the expected value of Time Spiral Remastered and went in basically breaking down the set, just saying, hey, I'm gonna use Card Kingdom's prices, obviously, which is awesome, because they are currently lower than what is on TCG Player, so like no big deal. And it goes into how, you know, this is a very broad strokes type of thing and prices are going to drop and who knows what the supply is going to be. Touch on that in a second, but just looking at the mythic spot, there's 15 mythics in the set, five or give or take those chase mythics with five being like dollar or two level value. So just very sad mythics, but all in all, the average value of a mythic in the set is about 14 bucks. If you'd have five of them in a box, which is again, the average of what you should have, give or take 70 bucks added to the box. We look at the rares, there's a handful of chase rares as well. You're gonna open, if you take away five mythics in a 36 pack box, you get 31 of these rares. If the average value, give or take, is 368, you get about 114 bucks added to the value of your box. Uncommons, you get a handful of ones that you're chasing. Commons, you've got like one or two that are over a dollar. You take all those, value added to the box you're cracking to flip and sell the singles or give or take break and even buying a box is right now about 200 to 220 depending on what website you're using but 200 bucks isn't uh, ecstatic because just about every product that's ever released for magic at least immediately after it's starting to be opened prices begin to drop however with time spiral remastered we have the old bordered time shifted cards in each pack. There's value here as well. And you can see like Thoughtseize, expensive. Ponder, expensive. Chalice of the Void, in demand and expensive. Now he also draws a parallel here to the old alpha beta print runs and how there is, you know, some foil versions of these time shifted cards. And because we don't know how rare they're going to be, there's the potential that these old time shifted foil versions are just as rare as the alpha beta rares, like a Black Lotus. Now, not obviously not as valuable as a Black Lotus, but if there's only, what, give or take, four or 5,000 copies of each, that's uh, that's gonna make any of these expensive, which is, again, what he's showing here when we look at the, what is assumed to be the Thoughtseize price versus Secret Plans, which is probably one of the least exciting cards in the time-shifted sheet. But uh, hey, if you want one for a Commander deck, you're probably willing to pay a premium for this super fancy version of it. Maybe. And if you look at the time shifted cards, just going through the average value and the fact that you're pulling 36 of these in a box, I mean, that's over the price of any 
boxes I'm seeing sold online right now. Like that alone would be a reason to buy a box and crack all the packs and flip those ASAP. Kind of crazy. And he's not even thrown in the value of what the foil or foils, if you're lucky enough to open one, would be. So all in all, today, mid-March 2021, if your question is, should I buy a box to simply crack it and sell the packs? The first question I guess I would ask you is, are you able to get your hands on that box and crack those packs as early or earlier than most folks? Because you gotta make sure you're not waiting weeks after the set's released and hoping to then cash in on this kind of value because prices are gonna drop. We just don't know by how much. So if you're, if you're thinking of just cracking packs and selling them, if you have the connections to be able to crack the packs right now, it would seem like it's a no brainer. Yes. Why not? Another scenario or reason you might be asking, should I buy Time Spiral Remastered is because you want to buy some sealed product and store it until it appreciates in value. And the question is, is this set going to appreciate in value to the point where a sealed box is going to be well above whatever you're paying for it today? And I just, no one knows. And it's really hard to know because we, we have no idea what the supply is going to be on this set. But there's a couple things we can ask ourselves, I think, to get to the answer you're looking for. And that's first, do you believe the rumors that supply is going to be limited or extremely limited or very low for lack of a more sophisticated way to phrase it? And if that's the case, there's a lot of reasons here that it would suggest buying it for a sealed investment is a good investment to make because there's a lot of in-demand cards. There's a unique element to this set with the old border cards and the old border foils assuming wizards has taken has taken the least amount of pride they could possibly take in their product and at least given us cards that are playable unlike those commander legend foils good god almighty as long as we can play with these cards and that they are in demand and as exciting as we all think they are right now I, like it's hard to think that the set doesn't appreciate in value from a sealed perspective. So if you're someone who's thinking of buying a box or a case or whatever to store off to the side, if you think that the supply is going to be low, if you think the old border cards are going to be in demand and that the old border foils are going to come with a relatively ridiculous premium, then yeah, there's no reason why you shouldn't think this is another product to invest your money into. The other side of that is that if you're not confident that supply will be low and will help drive prices or keep demand at a acceptable level, then the, the downside is how much do you think prices are gonna drop from this EV of 500 bucks, give or take, in a box? I, I think the other gamble is just how expensive are those old border cards going to be or continue to be into the future and will the foils be in demand and playable depending on the condition that we get them in? That like That's the other gamble. And at, on, at the worst case scenario, if these old border cards end up being worth a fraction of what we think they are today and the old border foils are like commander legend foils where you can't play with them then yeah from a sealed perspective it's kind of rough but if you're someone who loves draft maybe that's your fallback is like you know what if they don't appreciate in value me and some friends are just going to crack them and play with them and that's as good a reason as any to have a box like this off to the side and i suppose the last question some of y'all may have is is it worth paying a bit more for this to get the lotus bloom promo with it from my LGS and I'm, I mean just yes if you're gonna buy from your LGS buy from your LGS because I cannot put into words how frustrating and sad and just blah it is to not have one nearby just buy from your LGS it's worth it do it uh, and the Lotus Blue promo was actually a pretty sweet promo it's worth give or take at least 20 bucks so that could add your minimum entry point to even up to 240 and you're still looking pretty good so yeah, to recap, if you're going to buy a box and just draft it with friends and crack it, I'm 100% in on that. I think that's a great idea because drafting is the best way to play Magic. And good on you, Wizards, for giving us a great nostalgic draft experience with a lot of good chase cards in it. And those chase cards are what make our second scenario of just cracking a box in the packs and selling and flipping them ASAP seemingly quite the lucrative endeavor. So if you're looking to crack packs, and sell them ASAP, you got those connections to get cards early or get them listed ASAP, I think you're on the right path. If you're looking to buy some boxes and ship or save them off to the side as a sealed investment, I think as long as you feel comfortable taking that risk of not knowing what supply will be and hoping that the old border cards, the foil versions especially, are going to carry a high price tag, then yeah, that's another another scenario. I don't blame anyone going down. And again, wish you all the best if that's what you're gonna do. I hope this video has helped you make your decisions. 
or if you've already made your decision, let me know what that is down in the comments. If you have other questions or just scenarios you want to chew on or talk through, leave me a comment with that as well. And I'll, I'm happy to chat with you there, or I'm sure someone else will offer their uh, perspective on it too. And then, yeah, it's a, it's a set that I'm excited to revisit a block in magic's history that i'm excited to revisit so good on you wizards for tapping into that reprint equity i pray that the card quality is what uh, i'm hoping it is and not what we've seen it be as of late I, i'm just gonna move on from that soapbox but yeah that's gonna do it for me folks thank you so much for watching we'll see you in the next video take it easy my friends peace